This is not some recent game, it was played in 2019, but I think it was a very nice game. So, we have this move order and uh, white castles, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, this castles, and now after a4, usually black has either bishop b7, covering the pin on the a file, uh, blocking with b4, and I think also there is rook b8. But here Dubov played d5, which is a very good surprise weapon, and uh, if white doesn't know what to do, it can be very dangerous for white. White has two main options. I think d3 is not an option here, because in that case you even have a choice of bishop g4 with some knight d4 ideas. So I wouldn't uh, take it too seriously. Uh, so it's either ab5 or ed5, which was played in, in the game. If ab5 is played, then it allows d4, and you have this sequence of moves, and uh, after black plays e4, he has a very straightforward uh, plan. He wants to go bishop d6, knight g4, and try, tries to exploit the missing pieces on the king side, because only pawns are currently defending the king side, and uh, black tries to exploit that fact. And also look at this queenside piece placement, it's not really good. So black is trying to use this to exploit this uh, temporary lag in development and tries to organize some attack on the king side. Dubov's game was uh, played in the title Tuesday after these moves. White played uh, queen g3 here, which was a bad move. And here actually Dubov didn't uh, punish this, uh, this bad move. He played something like rook e8, something very natural, but... Knight g4 would be very good here, with the idea of bishop d6 to capture this pawn, or with the idea of bishop h4 as well. This is also a threat. Here, white should do something like queen e2 and continue fighting for an advantage. In the game, ed5 was played instead. And now knight a5, trying to capture a bishop pair. And here white also has two choices. Does he want to capture a pawn, or does he want to go to a2? If he goes there... Probably white didn't like this move, which grabs more space in the center and uh, doesn't allow white to take a breath. Again, without the knight on f3, it's, uh, white's king is lacking defenders here, and uh, it's not easy to play this as white. So he took a pawn, quite principally, but now he allows the weakening of the structure on the queen side. And uh, yeah, here queen d5 would be also quite interesting, but it allows the, the tempo on a queen and... Here, Dubov plays bishop b7 instead, just trying to recapture with a piece. And also, if something like knight c3 happens, you always have a, an option for b4 and then to recapture on the d5. Here, white does the right thing and he goes knight c6, trying to liquidate a bishop pair. Takes, takes, and now bishop c5. Black is improving his bishop and also stopping d4 from being played. And that's why white played d3. He didn't want to say goodbye to his pawn, although this was the best move in the position. Going d4, and after bishop d4, just knight c3, and white would stabilize pretty easily. So, yeah, here d3 was played. White is hoping to get his bishop out, but now comes the strike. Bishop f2. White has to capture. Black follows it up with queen d4. If king f1 was played, then knight g4 is uh, quite unpleasant because you have to go rook e2. You cannot go here because of mate. If this is played, then you can even take on h2. And after this, he goes back and black is still keeping some initiative. And I think this position is much easier to play with black. White's king is pretty exposed. White's pieces still try to find uh, the best squares possible, but it's not possible just yet. Also, here king g3 is an interesting option, but the king is a bit uh, shaky there. Black might just continue with rook a8, trying to exchange one pair of rooks to eliminate a potential defender. And uh, probably this was something scary for white to go for. Uh, I guess here the best move is to avoid the trade by rook f1, and uh, white simply wants to go h3, king h2, and to evacuate. And I believe here that black doesn't have anything better than just repeat moves. To give a check like this, to 
force the king to go back and to give check one more time. Because uh, if you go, if here you go something like this, there's gonna be rook e3. And now the king cannot go back to f2 because the bishop hangs. If you go here, knight h5 is possible and uh, white's losing a piece. This was probably the best black got to just repeat moves and to make a draw. You know, when one side has uh, at least perpetual, it's tough to to go for that line because you might have missed something and uh, that would be fatal. So after queen d4, white made a huge mistake and he went for bishop e3. Now there was this check. We had captures and white's a full piece up. Coordination of these pieces is horrific. Black is going to bring his, uh, his rook into play and uh, if you count defenders and attackers, white actually has uh, a rook down. So black is going to have a queen and a rook in the attack, while white is suffering to bring his pieces into the play. You cannot even go with queen d2 because now simply black uses the poor placement of the pieces and uh, is going to capture a rook after these moves. And after rook a3, even b4 can be played. That's game over. White has to find something else. Uh, what is that? Well, if you take on e8, like I said, black has a full rook, up, extra rook in the attack. And something like queen e3 is going to come next with uh, king g4 and the king is going to run to eventual mate. So that's not going to be enough. What else? Well, he played rook e2 in the game, but... After this check, King g2 was played, and now a final killing blow, g5, threatening queen f4 with queen h4 mate. Now, white doesn't have time for h3 because it's a mate in one, uh, so he's trying this, but now black has a nice sequence of moves, queen d6, now king h3, and one more check, check, and here white resigned because if he goes to, okay, King f3 leads to this checkmate. On this move, there is queen d4, threatening rook e5. And if white captures on g5, then h6 is possible as well. But I think uh, you don't have to be that fancy. I think rook e5 also works. So if you take it, there's going to be a check and rook e6. After d3... Position got so complex after bishop f2, and I think it was too too hard to navigate this position. To figure out that king g3 is the, the way to go, king f1 seems also very scary because of knight g4. d4 would have just solved all the issues in the position and uh, would have made the white life much easier because his pieces would uh, be much better developed. 